Um, so yeah, that, that was pretty interesting. That was probably our biggest single uh, press-driven um, hit to traffic. Um, uh, <laughs> amusingly, the, the other one, I don't know if you, you saw this, but uh, this would have been about two years ago there was a, a story that made the rounds through all the, the various news outlets that like uh some couple in the throes of a divorce um uh, one of them logged in to the other's account and killed their world of warcraft character it was the, the avatar <laughs> murder story and that actually drove more traffic to us than any other news event, including positive, like virtual worlds are wonderful, and you know we're going to cure all of humanity's ails. Um, nah, a good story about you know avatar murder will uh, drive the traffic anytime. <laughs> Anyhow, can you make bots? Um, yes, in fact you can. Um, in fact, I'm a bot. Wait, no. Um, but how would you know? Um, so we don't um, we don't make oh sorry what is a bot okay um, so we're all here and we believe since we might have met each other in real life and we're all speaking and um, we think that we're speaking in human voices um, that we're all people. Um, it's very common in an environment, in a, a virtual world, to interact with people you've never met in real life, um, and in fact may have never heard the voice of, never had a phone call with, or something like that. Um, so it's possible to create um, characters, avatars like this, that are controlled by software. Um, so they're sort of software robots, or uh, bots for short. Um, and there are various useful reasons why you, you might want to do this. Um, for example, if you're uh, running a store and uh, you know you sell clothing, or, or um, perhaps you know more more interestingly, you sell you sell animations. You sell the piece of, of data that makes an avatar bow. You know, there's no real good way to uh, to preview that without seeing another character do it. Um, and so stores, for example, will often have a robot standing there looking like a person, and when you click on something on the wall, the robot shows you what the animation is going to look like. Um, likewise, you know, you can do simple sort of tour guide kind of things, have people type a question to the bot, and the bot will respond back. Um, over the years, um, even before virtual worlds, there have been some kind of famous software robots. There's a, a very famous one called Eliza that uh, is a psychiatrist, or pretends to be a psychiatrist, um, uh, of the, the school of psychiatry that just sort of encourages you to keep talking. And so it'll listen to everything you've ever typed at it, store it all, and then um, just try to prod you. It says, like, you know, earlier you mentioned your mother. Tell me more about your mother. Um, and it's, it's a really dumb piece of software. It just sits there and looks for certain words and kind of spits them back at you. Uh, but some people find... Uh, uh, typing text back and forth with it, um, with it is, is quite engaging. Um, if you want to look that up, just uh, search for Eliza, and there'll be lots of uh, descriptions of that online. Um, so the short answer is yes, you can make bots in Second Life. Um, many, many people have, um, uh, but we don't we don't make it very easy to do it, and that's not. It's not that we're trying to prevent people from from making bots. Um, it's just it's hasn't quite made it to the top of the priority list yet. Does that kind of get at, get at uh, your question? Yes, thank you. There is actually I, a, a related. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just had this idea that um, if you could make a schizophrenic bot, you could put it in virtual hallucinations and. That would be really cool. That would be interesting. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. Um, the other thing that, that Second Life lets you do um, that I think makes it um, more compelling than, than other virtual world um, uh, products is that um, while there are a lot of systems that look better um, 
than Second Life. Um, you know, the, the quality of the visuals is higher, things load faster, you know, the images aren't fuzzy, that sort of thing. Um, Second Life lets anyone who participates in the system really fundamentally change the world. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, I can click in the, the build tools that's built into everyone's client and say, I want to put a cylinder here. And that cylinder will appear, and it appears not only on my screen, it appears on all of your screens. Um, and not only can I put cylinders there, I can put um, little computer programs in them. I can put scripts in them. Um, so this little cylinder uh, says, hello, avatar. And when you click on it, it says, touched. Um, so in a sense, the, the script there is kind of a bot. It doesn't look like a person. It's just a piece of software running. But that, that would be the sort of software that would be controlling um, a bot. Um, and the fact that, that anyone in the environment can not only um, see that and interact with it, but also create things like it um, means that anybody can, can make stuff in the world. Um, and now most people don't. You know, 90% of our users just use um, things that other people have created that they can either get for free or for very cheap. Um, but the 10% who, who really want to fiddle around with the building tools um, can actually add new and interesting things to the world. And that's why there's such a sort of a diversity of, of, of content, why we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds of chairs that we're, we're all standing around, um, and why we have, you know, variety of houses and trees and hang gliding simulations and that sort of thing. Um, so in, in a sense, it's a little bit like the 3D web. You know, um, pretty much anybody can write a blog post. It's not that hard to, um, to set up your own website or even set up your own web server. Um, and so you can create stuff that anyone in the world can come and see. Um, we don't yet have a real 3D web standard in the same way that we have um, uh, the same thing for, for two-dimensional web pages. Um, but Second Life is, is a, a small step in that direction. Um, it's, it's a place where um, you know the world's always there, whether you're logged into it or not, and different people can create different um, content for it, and you can browse through it and, and experience it. Okay, so James, let's. Uh, can you? Would you mind doing some more building now and show us some of the, the demos? Uh, because uh, I'm going to have to finish day 30 as uh, as we originally planned, but I really want to see what you're going to make tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, for those of you who are here earlier, I was actually putting together these little little benches, um, which was just to emphasize the point that um, rather than using um, some kind of uh, sophisticated 3D modeling software. Um, basically, we build things more or less out of Legos. Um, we build them out of these primitive objects, um, cubes and pyramids and stuff like that. Um, and when you, you put them together, you can glue them all together. Um, and they become uh, individual objects, like uh, this sort of sad replica of a bench that you can pick up and drag around. Um, and that, that approach actually is how uh, all content um, in Second Life is created. Um, everything you see here is built out of these, these uh, primitive shapes. Um, the ones that have behavior, the ones that do something when you, um, when you click on them or, or um, have uh, scripts inside of them. Um, Going through the, the the scripting language right now is this sort of terrible kind of like C dialect that we came up with many years ago. Um, that will change shortly. We're we're starting to support um, a, a standard computer programming language called C sharp that more people know. 